Hey, Scorpio, welcome to your fairy blessings. And for those of you who are joining me from Keen, thank you so very much. Um, if you want to check out the content that I already have pre-made, posted for you guys on Keen, you may do so for my returning Keen customers. And for anybody, anybody who would like to join Keen and get a three minute free reading with me, please go ahead and make sure to go to the email down in the description box below. Say, hey, I would like the three free minutes and I will give you a link that uh, Keen, I still have to set it up. So I'm taking like a pre-order list right now on the free reads. Uh, so just FYI. Okay, guys. Now, uh, Scorpio, as I get into everything else, I have already done a, a romance angels reading for the month for the collective, a moon reading for the month for the collective, a <laughs> September read for the collective, and I have done a Mercury retrograde best practices in Virgo video. All of these are videos with the links that, uh, again, they're going to be on the King page, but I'm also going to try and put them down in the description box below just so you guys can purchase them straight away. So give me just a second here because these are Fey Blessings. So for anybody who's new or from Keen, Fey Blessings are just blessings that you can use in your present moment provided to you by the Fey, the Fey Realm. If I can talk today. Uh, so hold on just a second. I want to make sure my timer is on, which it is not. Uh-oh. There we go. Okay. So let's go ahead, Scorpio. My beautiful Sealy Court, what are the Fae messages and blessings that are coming through for Scorpio in the month of September 2022? Show me, please. Ooh, oh, we've, we got this one the last time I did a Fae reading, if you're from the YouTube channel. So hold on just a second. Show me, please. Clearest of divine guidance from the Sealy Court. What are the two Fae messages that we have? for Scorpio. All right, hold on. Oof. Okay, we can't take that one. It's in reverse. It's not that I don't read reversals with this deck. It's just the deck isn't made for reversals. So I always take it as whenever it's reversed, it's something that you're not really meant to like use at this point in time. Like it's coming, but not yet. You don't need it yet. So, just, so show me, please, what is coming in for Scorpio? That's a neutral. I'll take it. I'll take it, but it's neutral. All right, let me give one, one more good shuffle. Oh, here we go. Three, hold on, y'all. Oh, these are all in reverse. <laughs> but this one was in the upright, so we will take this one. Okay, so here's something kind of interesting. First card we have right out the gate is a blessing of glamour. Now, if you're new, you have no idea what this is, but if you are a returning viewer, you know exactly what this is. We've talked about this before, but I'll go ahead and go over it again. A blessing of glamour from the Fey realm is about how to control the veil. Now, the veil is what keeps the Fey realm and the our realm technically separate. Technically, we used to share this a planet with the Fae and also they are a part of my ancestry and heritage from where I come from one of my family member sides of the family so I know a little bit more about how things work but in terms of the glamour part and the aspect it's not just about glamour magic I mean glamour magic helps make us look beautiful can change our appearance but this goes beyond that this is about using a glamour because sometimes glamour, that's what they call it. It can cloak you, it can make you invisible, but it can, it is also how to control the veil. So, and the veil is what spirit crosses through to the other side or what we can't see. Remember, as I said, the Fae, we don't see them because of the veil, but they used to be able to, we used to share the realm with them. And then they had to veil themselves from us because, well, we were conquerors. So, uh, they shield themselves. Now, 
the funny part about this, I don't know if you guys have ever seen that movie. Um, oh, it has Jimmy Stewart in it from like the 1930s. And it's about, he actually works with a fae spirit and it's a puma. <laughs> I actually have looked this up and um, it has a veil and it re it will take the veil off to reveal itself to people. Um, oh, I wish I knew the name of it. Just go look it up. It's like one of his biggest movies. He, he It's one of his favorites, actually. He said that was his favorite movie was uh that movie by jimmy stewart but i can't remember the name but it, the the puma is a very large bunny and um <laughs> in the film he later on like you don't get to see the bunny but it's implied you do because he he has all this money and he orders an oil painting commission and it's of him and the bunny harvey that's the name of the movie harvey y'all go watch harvey um if you can find it it's really cute it's actually very funny um, but there, you learn a lot about the fae and the glamour with this, but this is a blessing. So this is what's already coming to you. So honestly, I kind of like to think of a fae glamour as like Harry Potter's invisibility cloak. Um, and honestly, that's kind of what it is used for anyway by the fae, but you can use it to hide projects. You can use it to hide yourself, you know, not necessarily from people, but from energies that might want to do you harm. You can definitely use it like that. You can also use it. Um, I know on True Blood, they have an idea of a glamour and because the fairies come from the earth, but the vampires and the fairies have like some weird thing. Anyway, in that show, the vampires use glamour as a form of um, being able to access someone's inner you know thoughts but also being able to go within and kind of get them to tell the truth but like from a conscious state but it's it's like their most honest feelings uh and emotions and if you've ever seen true blood you know what i'm talking about now i'm not saying use glamour like that but you might be developing some aspect of this this month and it is a blessing so it is here for you to use and honestly, this is very Scorpio in nature, but it is in our recent past. So it looks like we're kind of almost done learning this lesson because I mean, this card has been coming up for the whole last year. As long as I've been doing these readings since March, it's been coming up and for Scorpio. And I mean, honestly, with Mercury retrograde, I wouldn't necessarily say it's not a bad idea to use this. I kind of would actually, or try to use a glamour, maybe like you know, to conceal yourself from Mercury retrograde, just a thought, just a thought, but I have gone over, I mean, we can't totally conceal ourselves or else we wouldn't learn anything, but maybe if you just need a break from Mercury retrograde and all of the lessons, because I talked about in the readings, how it's going to affect everybody differently. This might be when you need a break to glamour yourself from that energy that might help you. Now I do have here the, a blessing of clear foresight card neutral. Now this isn't bad. But this is telling me you will and will not be able to tap into your psychic intuitive abilities as much. Basically, the meaning is because, you know, your 11th house of Virgo is being hit by a retrograde and Pisces is in there right now with the moon. And there are two other planetary alignments that are going to be in there kind of muddling things up anyway. So if you were to go intuitive, I'm not saying it would be bad. But what I am saying is it would be like you go intuitive, you get the messages, but then the messages are mixed, okay? And it's because you're supposed to be taking a break and focusing. So I think if you're going to use your intuition, you need to have yourself cloaked first in this glamour, okay? Then you come in with this energy of trying to use your clear foresight. Honestly, if you can't use your clear foresight right now, that might make you feel a little lost as a Scorpio, but do know you do have a blessing of serenity here. So not all is lost. Maybe you're meant to just kind of temporarily not be able to use your clear foresight right now all the time, because it's like the universe is trying to give you a break from being so tapped and intuitive. It's trying to let you live a life of solidarity for a minute or two, you know, just to get catch your breath. Because sometimes when we are in the psychic realm, you know, even I myself as a reader have to take breaks. Otherwise I get overwhelmed. I get too many messages. I can't turn the dang thing off. Like I have to, I've had to learn how to turn it off. I've had to learn how to work with certain deities because 
as a Scorpio reader, do you have any idea from this time? And speaking of the veil, the veil is going to be thin around the full moon in Pisces and it will be thin all the way to our birthday. So since I'm a Scorpio myself, so I'm telling you guys this, so you understand that this is not the time to start going in and immediately going head first into intuitive foresight, clear sight, because it's just not the month for that. You'll attract so many energies. And believe me, when I was learning how to do the psychic mediumship, I had always had the ability. I never, ever grew it because I didn't have the right teacher. So finally I got the training. And the minute I got the training, all of a sudden I was doing readings in this world. And then I would go to sleep. And in the dream world, I was doing, I was giving messages, you know, at a table to, to people who were in the spirit realm. And imagine doing that for 25 additional souls a night. And you are dead tired when you wake up because you, you go from one world and your body's at rest, but your soul isn't at rest. So after that, uh, that went on from September all the way to December of that year. I had to put a stop to it because I, I actually had to work with an energy that did help glamour me um, because I couldn't get them to stop in the dream realm. So I had to kind of come up with a practical plan and solution. And I mean, occasionally a few pop through occasionally, but I guess it's only if their message is dire, um, but it's extremely rare now. So just kind of be mindful of the realms and including, you know, this usually talks about foresight in terms of psychic intuition and clear sight through visions in the waking world, but you can also get it in the dream world too. So if you do work with dreams, Scorpio, what I am going to suggest, or you're wanting to do dream work, I would put that off until October because you, you'll be bombarded with spirit messages. It, it's like, I made a joke one time on a fellow colleague's podcast. Like, am I the only psych, you know, psychic medium in a 16 mile radius? God, you know, cause it's like, you get so many people a night in your dreams, especially from now till December, it, it can be kind of overwhelming and you know, then you wake up and you're dead tired. And then you go, people are like, why are you always napping? You know, the muggles. And it's like, because I have things to do in the spirit world. I don't get no sleep. So <laughs> I was very cranky at that time. I can look back and laugh now, but at the time it was, it was uh, intense to put it mildly. Cause I was doing readings on here and I was doing readings on the lines and then I was doing them in my dreams like for 25 different souls a night yeah <laughs> so interestingly enough our last blessing that we do have here is the card of stability now this is about bringing in serenity and taking a pause I actually have worked with this card and how it worked is it it had me take a step back Around the same time, I actually needed to take a step back from doing psychic readings altogether in the in the this realm because I had health issues that I had to go work through. So for some of you, you know what I'm talking about. For those of you who are on Keen, you don't. And so um, some of you have probably been wondering why I've been absent for so long. Apparently, I had a tumor and it was non malignant, but I had to have it removed and. I was supposed to be back in two weeks. And then my doctor looked at me at the end of July and at the beginning of July and was like, yeah, you know, it's going to take a whole nother month. And then it took a whole nother month and two weeks. So it's, and then I was still having some side effect problems, not completely, but enough that it was, uh, that I have to go back in September, uh, just to make sure everything's okay. And so at that time, I wasn't in a space where I could give readings. I wasn't in a space to help people. I wasn't in the space of making space to even want to hear other people. And when you can be open and honest with yourself and admit that, you actually in turn give yourself a type of stability that I think it helps ground you to manifest what it is you truly need to work on. Since Mercury retrograde isn't necessarily a time about cultivating in terms of the 3D, it's about cultivating and reviewing and looking at the past to see where we're going in the future present. This is almost the perfect way to use this month in terms of a blessing, because every time you want to plan and I want you to kind of say, oh, that's perfect. I'm going to write it down for my future goals list. I'm going to research it. And then after, you know, October, 
uh, it's usually the beginning of October is when Mercury goes direct. Then I will begin to act on those plans. But in the meantime, I want to give myself the stability. I want to walk through it. I want to, you know, see it in my mind's eye, what it will be like. I want to, you know, in a way you'll be able to tap into the psychic ability that way. And you'll be able to feel it out and see how it feels for you. That will be able to give you the grounding that you need, Scorpio. But in the meantime, I want you when you get frustrated because you and Virgo, we <laughs> we're we're this we're we're like a mother daughter sign. Uh, we're the daughter sign of Virgo, and so we need to remember that when we get frustrated, it's okay to be frustrated. But it's also a time to say, hey, you know what? I got to take a step back. And I need to breathe and just for five seconds and then clear and recenter myself and figure out, okay, I'm frustrated. Why? Why is this frustrating me? It, why am I allowing this to pull my energy in this direction if that is not where I want to go? So that way you have a clear path in terms of moving forward, Scorpio, and you're not left in these emotional kind of, you know, downfalls and pits of, I would dare say uh, the Mercury retrograde. But aside from this, guys, I do have to let y'all go. I would love to see you guys. If you're from Keen and you want a session with me, I do email readings now. I do. If you want a video session, I can do one like this. And you can just click pay to view. And then you'll get the link in your video. Um, if you want to call or chat me, my schedule is on my profile which should be when I leave those links to my other content, my Romance Angels reading the, hold on, <laughs> the Romance Angels reading, the general September reading, and then the moon reading and the Mercury retrograde best practices. Like you should be able to access my profile from there. Okay. And like I said, if you want three free minutes with me and you want to become a new keen customer or client, definitely go to the email uh, down below and email it me and say, I would like three free minutes, you know, with you and let me know on the subject if you want to do a chat or a call. Okay. I will talk to you later. I love you so much. Bye guys.